Good morning, New Hope Community Church, family and friends. We will be meeting in person in Northport, Florida uh, this coming Sunday morning. Um, but those of you that are watching online throughout our area, throughout the country and around the, the globe, we um, invite you to actually take your, your um, Bibles. Uh, we love the Holy Scriptures. Uh, the Word of, we believe it is the Word of God. And today we're going to be in Mark chapter 5. Um, looking at uh, 10 or 11 or 12 verses that are very powerful as we continue now in our sermon series, When God Walked Among Us. And so we're excited about it, and we're going to just trust that you will listen to the Word of God. So um, I'll put this up here so I can see it, and let's, let's read the Scriptures. Um, a large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman who was there had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great uh, deal um, under the care of many doctors and had spent all of her that she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she got worse. When she, she heard about Jesus, she came from behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just could touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she l and left her body, and she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, the disciples answered, and, you, and yet you ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the power of your word. And we just ask that those that are listening, uh, Lord, that their hearts would lean into you. We pray that uh, this powerful story, uh, Lord, would uh, transform our lives. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. I mean, just imagine what it was like to be there when God walked among us, right? When God was walking among them 2,000 years ago. So I invite you with me as I do very often. Go back with me 2,000 years and I want you just to be thinking about all that was taking place because here's the thing. When God walked among us, when God walked among them, only God knows how much uh, she had suffered. She had lived with ble a bleeding uterus for 12 humiliating years. She had been labeled unclean by the rabbis and subjected to the Levitical prohibitions, unable to touch others or to be touched, ostracized by the synagogue, orphaned by society. And the orphaned by, and orphaned by God, at least she thought in her own mind, um, she had prayed, she had pleaded, but for 12 agonizing years, God had been silent. I want to ask you, have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like you've been praying and praying and praying, but God is silent? God isn't answering. God is not there. I mean, I know that I have, but I just want to challenge you. Have you ever experienced that? Or do you know someone among your family or friends that have been in such a predicament? Back to the story. Jump back 2,000 years. During that time, we got to understand that she was put out right, <laughs> and put out um, of the, the city's back door and kind of like shoved down its steps, if you know what I mean. Ever since, she, was, uh, she would have to forge the streets. She'd go to the back alleyways. She, um, she would l look for any scant leftovers to, that could give her a little bit of hope. Her eyes are downcast as you would pass by. She is self-conscious. She's ashamed. She's afraid. She fear, fears the condescendence of your eyes and mine. She fears the indifference on your shoulder turned coldly against 
her. Most of all, she fears the gavel that would be brought down in judgment of her life. She fears it being wrapped, that wrapped judgment of the gavel coming down, that her illness is a direct result of a personal sin. And uh, with the bleeding, a bleeding uterus, anyone could guess what kind of sin she had committed. Sexual, no doubt, and some of the whispered innuendos that the crowd would be saying, and perhaps even you would even say, some perversion, I'm sure, most likely. Um, and so there was these gossiped indictments that she had to live with all the time. And so besides the shame of the constant bleeding, she bears the burden of the stigma of her constant suffering. She carries the weight of this everywhere that she goes. She's kind of trudged from doctor to doctor, and she tries to find a place where she can lay her burdens down. The doctors have filled her mind with hope, but the uh, and in with their with you know their folk remedies, if you know what I mean. But in the end, the only thing that she's been relieved of is actually all her money. She is now, as we see in this passage, she is destitute. She has spent all that it, she had, is what it says. She is destitute. She's been, she's out of money. The doctors now finally admit to her that there's nothing that they can do for her, right? And so her life is kind of like ebbing away. There's a steady loss of, uh, of blood that is taking place year after year, year after year, year after year, and you know what? It's taking its toll. She is anemic as you look at her, right? She is pale. She is tired. She is so very, very tired. She is tired of the shame, tired of the stigma, tired of the, uh, of the charlatans that look her way. God only knows how much she suffered. Every illusion that she has uh, uh, ever had about life is now also actually shattered. Suffering has a way of doing that. And swept away were all, with all those illusions are also her dreams. Suffering has a way of doing that too, doesn't it? She no longer dreams of marriage of a family, of, you know, of combing the hair of a daughter or wiping away the, the dirt from a face of her son or of a bouncing grandbaby that would be bounced on her knee or being taken care of in her old age by loved ones. These dreams are gone. These golden memories she could treasure would not be her reality. Her suffering has whisked away all the dreams and put them into little broken piles. It's powerful, isn't it? Can you feel it if you were there? Right? But the stories of another physician reach down and pick up the pieces of those dreams. See, she's heard about a physician who charges no fee, a physician who asks nothing in return, one who has no hidden agenda beyond making a sick world well. She has heard of this physician, this Jesus who comes not to the healthy but to the sick, who comes not to the strong but to the downtrodden, who comes not to those with well-ordered lives, but those whose lives are filled with physical and moral chaos. And she has heard of Jesus' success among the incurables, the curing of the uncontrollable demoniac, the raising of a widow's dead son, the healing of a leopard, a leopard, she thinks, she's got to be thinking, a leopard, another untouchable, another orphan taken by the scruff of the neck and thrown from society's back door. This divine physician, she thinks to herself, simply, she touched this disease-written man and he became clean and whole. Certainly, she thinks to herself, if I could find this Jesus... And but just touch the fringe of his garment. I too could be cleansed and made whole. And so with a thin thread of faith, this frail needle of a woman stitches her way through the crowd. 
her tired frame, jostled by the clus- those that are clustering around Jesus. They are pressing in on him, brushing shoulders, rubbing against him, the curious, the eager, the desperate. And this desperate woman pushes an empty hand through the broken seam of the crowd. For a fleeting moment, she clutches the corner of his garment. Jesus is pulled back, not by the grasp of her hand, but the grasp of her faith. Power has left him and a surge through the hemorrhaging woman. And immediately, she feels the rush of her youthful health now returning to her. A flood of those feelings, the release of that causes her to release the grasp, and she is swept away by the crowd. But Jesus doesn't let her get away. Although the crowd was pressing on him, her touch was different. And the touch of this woman stops him in his tracks. How ready Jesus is to respond to the hand of an outreached faith. In obedience to his summons, she comes trembling, flushed, even embarrassed. I would say even fearful. She comes in between the lines of her confession, punctuated by the fragments of her tears. Jesus reads the whole story of the last 12 years of her life. You know what Jesus sees as he looks? You're watching, you're looking. He sees her isolation. He sees her introspection. He sees her insecurity. See, only God could know how much she has suffered. The crowds become blurry through the watery edges of her eyes through her tears. And for this intimate moment, she sees Jesus, only Jesus, and he sees only her face to face, the physician and the patient. She realizes this was a moment when God walked among her, just like God desires to walk among us. It was with this tender word that he gives to her. What does he say? What does it say here in the scriptures? It's, he said simply, daughter. And what by saying the simple word, daughter, he gives this orphan a new home within the family of God. He gives her healing and he gives her back her dreams. I'm not sure where you're at this morning. I don't know if you yourself or someone in your family or one of your friends has been orphaned. They've been ostracized. They've been kind of like, you know, you know, cast out of the church, cast out and orphaned by society. And you, and you or your friends or family have prayed and prayed and prayed and it seems like God has been silent. Here we see in the Holy Scriptures one who for 12 years and exhausted every option that she had, every doctor that gave false promises, but God isn't a God who makes false promises. He is the physician, we are the patient. He comes not for those that are healthy, but for those that are sick and that are ill, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And he desires for you, just like this woman in this intimate moment, to understand, my goodness, this was a time when God walked among me. And God wants to walk among us again here at New Hope Community Church in our, in our area and around the globe. So I call you today, in a, a, even if it's just a bare thread of faith, to reach out to God, to trust that He is the one who healed a, the leper, another untouchable. He is the one who actually could raise a widow's son. He is the one who could actually cure even an uncontrollable demoniac. So I'm not sure what your lot is, and I'm not, or the person you've been praying for, but God can do this. God desires to do this. 
God will do this as you reach out to him. It is our hope and prayer that by this story that you realize that, my goodness, only God can know our sufferings. And the way that he did that was, that was a time 2,000 years ago when God walked among them. But now today, he wants us to say, this is a time when God walks among us. I pray for you this week. We trust it will be just amazing for you. We pray all these things for you. In Jesus' name, amen.